What's up guys, Diplix here again, welcome back to another video. So, hope everyone's had a good Monday, we're gonna kick off the week with another fort defense battle. This is a fort I made myself today, uh, I don't think it took me more than an hour. Um, some of these uh, structures were slightly tricky to get working, but I think I've got the, the flak 38 towers working perfectly. We also have some uh, flak 88s, also known as the flak 36, down below. And what I've done is I've made this fort in a new way. It's a sunken fort. Instead of being a fort that's kind of like placed on a high ground, this one is sort of like in a dugout here in the, the desert, right? So I suppose like stacking sand and building something tall is kind of like tricky, uh, depending on, of course, the soil. Um, this isn't the driest of Sahara desert sand. This is near the coast, so it's almost a little, like, earthy in a way. Um, there is some texture to it, which is why they've been able to make some pretty sturdy trenches here. So we, we also have a mortar pit back here, and I say it's a pit. Even though it's on the high ground, it is surrounded by some dirt walls and sandbags. So in general, when you have mortars, you want to have them below surface level, or, like, below... Uh, the average altitude or the average uh, ground level, so to speak. But these guys are going to be kind of like uh, elevated and also then lowered. It's kind of interesting. I've played around with the terrain tool a lot today. If you guys want to see me making these forts in the future, I could do like a quick speed build of the fort before the actual fort battle because a lot of people could probably learn something by watching that, especially if you're new to map making. So some of these more... Uh, Tricky things would be the, the actual towers with elevated guns. Uh, also, the terrain tool can be a little tricky, but once you get a hold of it, it's it's pretty easy to, to manage. We also have a lot of pack 40s, so eight 75mm pack 40s, four flak 36s, four flak 38s, and a total of uh, eight MG 42s plus uh, four mortars. So this is the fort. We're going to allow the Brits to go at them. I'm not sure which year this is, but the year where everything was more or less available. It's, is, it's a little fictional because we're mixing MG39s and 42s. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's not a fully historical battle, um, but it is, it's, it's going to be pretty cool. We have the Africa Corps here with all the... I love the new uh, uh, textures here for the guns, especially the Flak 38s or 36s rather, they have so many skins available, and I can't wait to show that off. Uh, I also have a lot of new unit skins for the Brits. Uh, we can give them some super cool looking gear. I want to make like more videos using the Australians and uh, British SAS soldiers and even Indian soldiers. Um, so that would be super, super cool. We have all the uniforms and headgear for that, so we can make things happen. But yeah, I'm trying to currently get the zombie mod working for other mods than Call of Duty World War III. Right now, the mod seems to be limited to that mod, which is a little uh, sad, or not sad, but it's, it's a shame because it'd be fun to use in Star Wars and uh, uh, Warhammer and whatnot. But uh, look forward to more zombie content coming out soon, and look forward to more fort videos. As I said, in the comment section down below, let me know you guys... Uh, want to see if you guys want to see me speed building these forts before the video it would only take like two three minutes of a really sped up video uh, before the actual battle starts but uh, let's kick it off we're gonna go ahead and click start and we're gonna enjoy this battle so the British troops will be arriving from eight different directions each side and corner of the map making a total of eight spawns so the Churchills will be rolling in first they are the heaviest tank that the uh, British troops will be deploying today. Oh, it's taking a lot of fire. So it took one AT hit, probably from a, a Pack 40 that was already aiming in that direction. The uh, Flak 36s here on the sides take a little bit longer to uh, to aim and turn. Oh, there goes that AA crew. Oh, and uh, followed by the uh, Flak 36 right below. So we have a few more tanks rolling in. We've got the Valentines and Matildas, as well as uh, infantry and half-tracks. Good old desert rats. Great looking uh, British infantry skins, by the way. So about uh, five tanks and two half-tracks per wave. Here's uh, the other corner moving in now. So uh, this... Attack is sort of uh, going counterclockwise. 
So after this tank here in the corner, we're going to be looking at this side and then this corner up here. So it happens gradually so that we can focus on a more centered part of the action instead of being spread out all over the place. Are these mortars firing? I don't think they have any infantry targets yet. They're going to pretty much ignore vehicles. But all AA guns are back and firing, which is kind of interesting. I thought I saw the whole crew get thrown off with a gun. Uh, this flak here is being repaired. So he's in good cover here. Oh, this is really cool. We can't really see far. There's like a desert fog going on. But it's, uh, it's on a pretty big distance here. So this is a pretty huge map. I started off with a square. This fort is, by the way, 2,500 square meters. 50 by 50. So that's the size of it. I limited myself to a set size so that I knew I could keep myself within a, uh, uh, a frame. And uh, it would limit the uh, amount of time required as well. I mean, sometimes you can really just go out of hand with this because essentially there's endless possibilities and you can make these ridiculously big and I wouldn't be able to upload a video today. But so we're gonna run this a couple of rounds. We'll see if they can withstand the 360 attack. So from all different edges and corners and sides and whatnot. Right now they're doing okay. Let's see if we move ourselves down to a British point of view, you can tell that the fort has a very low profile despite being kind of leveled too in some areas. Some of the concrete here is taking a lot of fire. We see the cracks as results of all the tank fire. And these pack 40s are, they're doing work, but those Churchills are strong. And the Matildas and Valentines are quick and strong enough to knock out some of these AT guns. Actually, most of these AT guns. It looks like all the flax have been taken out. And I'm not sure if the mortars are firing. They should be, but they're taking a lot of fire. There's not a lot of infantry in range, to be honest. And some of these tanks are getting ridiculously close now. Yeah, I don't think we're going to hold it. This was the last part of the attack rolling in right now. So we've gone the whole lap around the map, so to speak. Uh, four different sides and eight uh, total angles here. Yeah, the machine guns on the tanks are going to mop up the rest here. I decided to not bring in any Panzer Fausts or Panzer Shreks. I decided to uh, maintain that side of the realism, but uh, I have mixed up some of the weapons. I don't think the MG42 ever saw action in Africa. Um, but yeah. The rest of this is pretty much a slaughter. The tanks are going to be supporting the uh, the British infantry quite severely here, so they're going to be able to march in with ease. Let's catch a glimpse of them here. So, what are the Germans up against? Well, a total of uh, 24 tanks and 8 half-tracks. So, about a company of uh, infantry and uh, 24 tanks. So, not a huge amount. I feel like 24 tanks in waves. So, do keep that in mind. They're not arriving at the same time. Should be a manageable number. But let's go ahead and amp this up a little bit. This is obviously not going to survive again. So, let's add some more uh, flax. And let's see if we can give the Germans better artillery. Alright? See you guys in a second. <laughs> yes! Okay, we have a flak cross in the center. Look at that. It forms like a symbol. Dude, that is awesome. I love symmetry. Symmetry has always been a thing thing for me. If I upload a future, like, speed build of me making a map, you will notice that I am probably, probably the most picky mapper there is when it comes to placing these th things. Thanks down. I almost changed accent there completely. Like, uh, I, I use angles. I use exact measurements. I... Uh, I use, like, degrees and everything when placing this. This is, like, an exactly 100% symmetrical fortress. And, like, how do I know this? Well, see, I look at a lot of other maps that people send me, and I will always, my eye can see from, like, a mile away, I can see that one sandbag is not correctly 
in line with the other sandbags or that one wall is overlapping or, you know, I use like maths when I do this. Okay. I edit people, I edit things, uh, in their, uh, like position using the, the numbers on the side here, the X, Y, Z triangular directional measurements and whatnot. Okay. That sounds super, super complex and whatnot, but it might have to do something with the fact that my dad is an ar architect and I've always been super OCD picky about things being like exactly adjusted in symmetry, depending on, of course, what we're doing. A fort should be symmetrically, uh, placed because it is handmade. It is man-made and everything that is man-made should be, um, uh, mathematical if it serves a function that is, um, either related to the military or something else, you know, something that it has, has where the shape has a true effect on it. I'm not the kind of guy that just enjoys the, the modern art. That is just a bunch of squares and stuff like that. Like I'm mixed with when it comes to that, but this stuff really gets me. So let's see what the, the fort focuses on first. I am slightly opposed. I'm like not really fully in support of what these guys are doing here with their guns. That one's going to clip through the gun, isn't it? Yeah, so they're all focusing on this direction, where, by the way, the, the first Churchill just went down. But we have more tanks and armor arriving. So are they all going to open up now? That is a gazillion flat guns firing at the same time. So if you guys want to see, like, a flak battery, I mean, we're talking, like, 24 flaks. I want to put 24 flaks in a fort and see what kind of damage they can do. Oh, boy. So we'll see if these guys kick more ass now than the mortars. There we go. Hopefully they don't all aim at the same target. Like that would be a waste of firepower. Okay, so okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and cut the immersion here for a second. We have a um, fog and haze rather that is way too thick. We're gonna end that six thousand meters away instead. And there we go. Now you guys will be able to see more of what's going on. The armor rolling in. I should have done that for the first time as well. So. Oddly enough, the flax down here in cover take fire first. Like, are those rounds missing the, the flak 38s upstairs, so to speak, and hitting the flax below? What's wrong with that? They're, like, meant to be in pretty decent cover. But I think these tanks are very accurate. Oh, no, you guys can't get in. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. Chill. Okay, so they want to get in to repair the flak. We'll see if they can do that. I'm going to just bring him in and boom. Why did you not move? I just dragged you. Why are you not inside? Come on, dude. There we go. Okay, so they're back in action. So far, it looks like the extra flax are doing good work, but we've only come to the second wave here. We've passed one corner and gone to the second side. Oh, they're missing. They were almost hitting it. Close, but close. Don't quite cut it. Infantry's gonna dismount after that half track is shot. But so far, all guns are functional. Every single gun are fu is functional. So that is a huge change. Churchill has taken a lot of flak fire. Look at that quad. It's insane. But uh, it's not gonna go down. It's gonna lose its crew instead, so good game. looks like the pack 40s firing at the Brits don't pack enough firepower to get those one-shot kills out in the way but oh boy is this an impressive center right now it's a little confused I think they want to aim at different things oh they're gonna have a little meet up in the center okay yeah I wish you could restrict the angle of these guns because then we could have uh, one flag. I mean, these flags rotate 360 degrees for various reasons. You're not supposed to place them like this realistically. But um, we've seen a great difference here in efficiency. We've lost zero. Or actually, we've lost one quad up here. But this flag down here is... It's still functioning, but it's it's technically lost because it's decrewed. So it's not going to be firing anymore. And now we start losing a few uh, pack 40s here on the side, but the flax in the center are still working. I feel like one good HE round here in the center could take all of these out at once. Or at once, but uh, it's not happening. There we go. Some MG rounds are starting to the center. That's going to start kill. Oh, there we go. 
Yeah, they're still firing AP at these targets, though. It might be a more uh, accurate round. Okay, that's two flax in the center down. The other two are halfway there with only one crewman crewing it. There we go. There goes the third one. See, we might not survive this after all. The center is being targeted now once the other sides get closer. Oh boy, so for, for the last part of this fort defense, I want to show you guys a 360 degree attack. Brits attacking from every single side. So we're still holding. We've uh, got a lot of functional flax here. And if we do that, we might not see this confusing movement here in the center where the flax start aiming at each other and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, this is... Only uh, Nazi Germany would, would construct something like this. It's kind of stupid, but it's also like a really good show of, of power. Putting so many guns in one space and it, it's, it's very evil in a way, you know what I mean? It's like a, a flak turm, right? Like a flak tower. I, I, I suppose it's easier to call it flak tower. Is it, isn't it called a flak turm in real life? I've been to one in Austria. They had a few around the uh, city of Vienna. Um, and other German cities, I do believe. Yeah, Flakturm. They must have taken quite some time to make. German, Flakturm. Eighth complexes of large above-ground anti-aircraft gun blockhouse towers constructed by Nazi Germany in the cities of Berlin, Hamburg, and Vienna. From 1940 onwards. Huh. They built smaller single uh, single turret or single tower flag towers near some other strong points as well. Single purpose flag towers. Yeah, so I'd, I'd call the German defense still active. There's a 50 caliber half track opening up at us with about zero infantry protection. The rest are staying back, but this fort is still holding Despite all the four flax being down in the center, and all of the flax on the outside too, one that the crew can't get to because of the design of this fort. I might have to change these out for sandbags. Um, it would allow repair. Like, they can't walk below. I don't know why they can't. I wish they could. There's some sort of invisible wall or obstacle there. I think that happens when you make something or build something above it. I've tried to circumvent it, but it doesn't work. So, that's that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna call this one a uh, inconclusive British assault. Um, essentially, if this half track were to move, it could be hit by the pack 40s, and then it would definitely be game over. But they did a lot more damage than I thought. Let's uh, redo this and see how quickly this fort falls uh, when there's no. Uh, waves when it all happens in one go because uh, I think this fort is going to go down before you can even say a word. So let's take a look at that and let's see how the Germans okay, fare. So to make things a little easier for the Germans I decided to remove the concrete uh, defense or cover around the uh, the flax. They don't ne really need it anyway since they're below ground. I built them before I decided to lower the entire fort. So they're essentially pointless but now the german crew can actually get back to these flax and repair them so we'll see if that uh changes a few things up so let's go ahead and unpause and enjoy as the fort is about to take fire from pretty much all eight angles at the same time the four sides and the four corners and as you can tell all the guns are going to be shooting at the targets directly uh, opposite of them instead of uh, swiveling too much It's a cool sight, I'm not gonna lie. I, I enjoy all the guns firing. This is uh, screenshot worthy, let me tell you that much. There's a lot of flax on the pro prowl here. Let's, uh, okay, opened up some feedback console and windows. Hopefully that didn't mess up the recording any bit. I wanna get these, oh, there we go, boy. Oh, there we go, boy. Oh, yeah, I like that. So, do take note of the fact that we're being attacked from 
eight different angles now, eight different directions. 360 degrees here. These flags are working hard, man. They've got so many targets to move to. Uh, this flag is entirely knocked out. Both of the crewmen are dead. We're starting to lose packs. Uh, but the uh, flag 38s up top are still firing. And the tanks are getting so much closer this time around. And there we go. Two flags down in the center. Oh. It is so freaking cool, though. All this carnage. The infantry is finally being put to use. The MG uh, 42s down here opening up. <laughs> Man, I thought this would be more efficient. I thought nothing could break this. I thought the 80 guns will destroy absolutely everything before it gets here. But, you know, truth be told, the British armor is small. Most of it is small and fast. Hard to hit, to be honest. And they're using all their weapons on the go. So... The Matildas and Valentines back here are excellent for this, actually. I think the attack would have been uh, harder for the Brits if they had used slower tanks, more heavier tanks, despite the fact that, be, that they're more protected. Speed actually is the, the biggest protection for these guys, because we have to be missing a lot of these shots. Look at the infantry's about to storm now. I wonder if there's even going to be any infantrymen for him to challenge. Probably not. They're all dead. And the Brits have substantially more tanks active. A lot less than what they had at the start, but uh, I reckon they have about four to five functioning ones and uh, a lot of half tracks too. Some, t some of the tanks are being repaired too, so goodbye. Hope you guys enjoyed this fort defense. We've got some tanker here checking out the fort. And uh, I'll see you guys soon again. If you guys want to see more forts made by me, and if you want to see them uh, speed built and all that, let me know and uh, we'll make it happen. I could even take this fort and turn it into like a star fort. Hey, I want to make a World War II star fort. World War II star flag fort or something like that. But uh, I'll see you guys soon again. Bye.